Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning, Ava. <laughs> the sucking of the thumb. Okay, today is July 31st, and it's already a Friday. It's the weekend for us in Modesto. I hope everybody else, everywhere else in the world is having a good weekend. I wish all of you well. And so this morning we invite you to uh, participate with us as we uh, comment on the gospel for today's Mass. The gospel comes from St. Matthew, chapter 13, verses 54 to 58. So this is a short gospel. Okay. Jesus came to his native place and taught the people in their synagogue. They were astonished and said, Where did this man get such wisdom and mighty deeds? Is he not the carpenter's son? Is not his mother named Mary? And his brothers, James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas, are not his sisters all with us? Where did this man get all this? And they took offense at him. But Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor, except in his native place, in his own house. And he did not work many mighty deeds there because of their lack of faith. We've commented on this particular gospel passage a few times before. And today I want to concentrate and focus on the last line. Okay? He did not work many mighty deeds there. In other words, he did not perform many miracles in his own hometown. And what reason does he give for not doing that? He says, because of their lack of faith. Okay, he did not perform many miracles in his own hometown because of their lack of faith. Because the people did not believe who he was. The people did not believe he was the Messiah. They thought he was just the, 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 the boy they grew up with. They thought he was just the neighborhood lad that, uh, you know, was playing among them and uh, was visiting their 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 homes uh, in and out of the of their of their community and uh, they were so used to seeing this boy Jesus grow up with them they know uh, that they know Saint Joseph his father they know uh, uh, our blessed mother Mary um, they could identify them they know his cousins by the way when when the Jews refer to brothers and sisters they're not they're not siblings they're actually uh, relatives. Okay? That's just the way the, the translation goes. Okay? So they know who Jesus was from the moment of his birth. Okay? Or maybe from his boyhood. So they could not believe that all of a sudden this, this neighbor of ours, this playmate of ours is the Messiah. Uh, how is that possible? Right? Because they had a preconceived idea about the descendant of King David right? being the savior of the world. So they had a, they had a different kind of uh, image of royalty of the Messiah. And all of a sudden, this poor lad uh, goes, to the, uh, goes back to the uh, synagogue and, and reads the scroll and says, whatever your, what, uh, this scripture is being fulfilled in your hearing now. See, meaning, yeah, I am the one that this scripture is referring to. The Messiah coming, right? So they all got scandalized. Say, how can that be? So anyway, in this Gospel of St. Matthew, um, Matthew says, He did not work miracles or many miracles. Maybe he worked a few, but not many miracles there. Why? Because of their lack of faith. Now that is very important. That's a very important uh, matter to understand. Jesus was not performing miracles in order to do magic. See? The performance of Jesus of miracles was not for magic, 
was not for entertainment. Okay? What, was the, what was the purpose for all of the mighty deeds, so to speak, or the, or the miracles that Jesus was performing? What were they for? What was the purpose for all of that? Would you know? Himself. Jacob? To make himself known as God. To make himself known as God. <clears throat> well, okay. Yeah? What else, Joe? Same thing. Same thing? Okay. Yeah, it is. Uh, 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 that's one purpose. It is to confirm. To confirm what they might already believe in, what they might already know, what, what, what people, what the Jews uh, already were experiencing, that this is the Messiah promised to us. And so the miracles that Jesus was performing was to confirm that belief, to confirm that faith, that yes, this is an assurance to you that I am indeed the Messiah. And to, to further prove that, since you already have the seed of faith in you, you already believe that I am the Messiah, I'm just going to confirm that with you by, by giving you some extraordinary signs by way of the miracles that he performed. And where else do we find this, this logic? Okay? That the miracles were not performed in order to just entertain people or, or, or get them uh, stupefied and, and, uh, and all struck, right? Where else, did, 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 uh, uh, where else do we find the proof that Jesus was performing miracles to confirm the faith of people? You know, it's practically littered all over the Gospels when... When our Lord tells um, Martha, for example, just the other day we were, we were celebrating the Feast of St. Martha, right? The sister of Lazarus. What did he tell uh, 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 Martha? He says, your brother will rise. And then Martha says, yes, Lord, I know he will rise in the, the resurrection of the dead. And then our Lord turns to her and says, I am the resurrection and the life. Do you believe that? Do you believe? And Martha says, Yes, Lord, I believe. See? And so he says, Today you're going to see the glory of God. See? Today you're going to see the glory of God working in me. He, what he meant was he was going to raise Lazarus from the dead. He was going to perform a miracle. right? And the same thing is true with the others that he would cure. The paralytic, the blind man. See? He would tell them, Your faith has saved you. Okay? Your faith has saved you. Meaning that, okay, the miracle performed for them was a consequence of them first having to believe. Was a consequence of them disposed already to accept Jesus Christ as the Savior. Okay? So that's what miracles are all about. It's the confirmation of our faith and it strengthens the faith of people who already have faith. Okay? Now, question here is, does Jesus still do miracles these days? Yeah? We only hear of miracles in, in, in the gospel, right? But are there still miracles happening in this day and age of ours? Are there? Would you know of any? Yeah, Chevelle, what? Huh? Yeah, so what? You, you, you said yes, so... Mass. What's that? The mass. the mass, of course. What happens in the miracle of the Mass? <coughs> what mi uh oh God bless you. What happens in the Mass? What miracle? Transubstantiation. Transubstantiation. Very good. See? Every day in all Catholic Masses... We have the miracle of transubstantiation, the, 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 the change of the substance of the bread and wine into the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ. Every day, almost every hour of the day, actually, this miracle happens all over the world. Pandemic or no pandemic. <laughs> now, what else? What other miracles happen? 
people get healed? Yes, of course. There's still Jesus still performs some miraculous healing. Yes, right. A lot of people we have we know plenty of stories of of cancer patients of of people who miraculously survive one thing or another or even an accident or you know things like that. Yes, many things that could not be explained scientifically have uh, continue to occur. Uh, during these days. By the way, what is a miracle? How do we define a miracle? Very good, Joseph. You say it louder. The it's louder. I cannot hear it. They can't hear you. See? The suspension of the laws of nature. Very good. The suspension of the laws of nature. That is what a miracle is, right? It's not magic, okay? Because magic is an illusion. Okay, magic is an illusion. Okay, uh, magicians do magic. The devil can do magic. Okay, can trick us. Okay, with our uh, can perform illusion uh, 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 kinds of tricks that would trick our senses. That's what uh, magicians and, and even the devil can do that. But only God can suspend the laws of nature. Why? Because he's God and because? Huh? Mia? He can if he wants to, but more than that, more than that, nothing is impossible with God, yes, okay, but because, Joe? He created nature, right? He created nature. He's a creator of everything. So, since he made everything, he can also suspend. Uh-oh. He can also suspend and modify how nature works. Right? And that is the definition of a miracle. It's a suspension of the laws of nature. So, and only God can do that because he's the creator of all of these nature that we experience around us. So, <clears throat> now, what other miracles can happen? Huh? What other miracles besides the Eucharist happening all the time, besides uh, physical healing that, that people have already experienced? See, even that physical healing, of course, that's a suspension of nature, right? Somebody who's already terminal is about to die, all of a sudden gets well, right? That is not the normal course of nature, right? Uh, uh, you know, people who are very sick, or, you know, the, the natural course is, yeah, okay, it leads to death. But once in a while... God allows them to heal without any explanation of science. Why? Why does Jesus sometimes heal people physically? Because what, Chevel? Louder. Huh? Why? You know, primordially, primarily, the healing of the body eh, is because it would be good for the soul. Okay. Listen to how he cured the paralytic. The paralytic that was brought from the roof in the house of Peter, right? Brought down. What did he say? First, your sins are forgiven. And then people got scandalized. Well, what do you mean? Who can forgive sins? How come he's saying forgive? This guy came here to be cured of his paralysis. And here you are forgiving sins. Well, that is to emphasize. To emphasize precisely to people that, yes, you know, I can perform miracles, but the miracles I perform is not primarily a physical cure. It is precisely in consideration of the good it can do for your soul. Okay? For the soul. And the forgiveness of sins is the good of the soul. It's for the salvation of that soul. And so if the physical condition of a person will help to facilitate the salvation of that soul, okay, then God can perform a miracle. Okay? So, speaking of which, what other miracles can we experience actually on a daily basis for ourselves? What miracles do you think can we experience every day of our lives? Any guesses? Yeah? What's that, Joe? 
Change. Yes, change. What kind of change? Joe, louder. Change for our souls? Yeah, how? But you're, 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 uh, you're treading on the right path. Change. Huh? Conversion. Conversion. Yes. Yes, Sophia. Conversion. Change for the better. Change of attitude. Change of behavior. Change of disposition. Okay? All of these things happen every day. Every time we see an improvement in ourselves, let us remember that these things do not happen just because we are smart, just because we are excellent, just because we are handsome or, or pretty or whatever. It's not so much because of our own personal efforts. Okay? Remember, we have a broken nature. Remember that we have original sin. Although forgiven in baptism, it retains the stain, the tendency to keep committing sin. Even if Jesus Christ has died for us on the cross and saved us, we yet retain that tendency of committing sin. And that's our experience every day, right? But what change, what miracle can happen in, in us uh, as, we, uh, as we go through this journey of life? Well, it is very much the miracle of improving ourselves. The miracle of, more, of becoming more and more like Christ. Little by little. Of course, we put our effort and God counts on our effort in the same way that when he performed the miracle uh, 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 with, uh, with, during his time, he needed the paralytic to stand up. He told him, okay, get up, take up your pallet and walk. <laughs> right? The paralytic still had to put effort in order for the miracle to happen. Okay? So, the same thing is true with us in our lives. Our Lord still wants us to put the effort to try to improve our lives, to try to convert ourselves, to try to, to uh, help ourselves. See, there's also that saying, God helps those who help themselves. Okay? So we still need to put the effort, but, but it is really God's grace that works that miracle of change, that miracle of improvement in our lives. And the more we try, the more we pray for that grace, the more God responds. Every bit of effort we put receives a corresponding grace from God to help us improve on our way to heaven so that we get to heaven so that we become saints in this world and merit the kingdom of heaven as a reward. Okay? So these are the miracles that happen every day. Okay? So our Lord continues to perform miracles for us, not only physical healings, not only saving us from one way or another in, in our needs and conditions, uh, uh, but, you know, more importantly, the more important miracle that happens every day in each and every one of us is the miracle of transforming ourselves more and more into the image and likeness of Jesus Christ. So that, so that at the end of our lives, we may present ourselves to Him in our particular judgment, right? And he would see in us a mirror of himself. Okay? So that Jesus may look at us and welcome us in heaven and says, Yeah, you look like me. <laughs> okay. Somehow, right? Yes, yes, I, I can see a mirroring of my image in you. Welcome, good and faithful servant. Okay? Welcome into the kingdom of of my father we would like that that would be music to our ears right once we get to that point in our lives when we are ready to ascend to the father 
in 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 full confidence that we have tried our best all throughout life to try to become a saint with the grace of God, right? Depending on the miracle of grace in our lives. So have faith, right? Have faith. That's the requirement. We need to have faith and we need to have hope that God is going to help us. So we have to believe that God is going to help us. We cannot fall into despair and say, oh, I'm really rotten. Oh, I am hopeless. Oh, I can't really do anything. I cannot improve. No, 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 no. God is always there. Have faith in the fact that God is going to help you. Have hope. Uh-oh. <laughs> Have hope that you can change. And then, with a little effort, getting up on your feet like the paralytic, getting up on your feet, putting a little effort, miracles of change, of sanctity can happen. Okay, folks, that's it for us. Have a good day, everybody. May you have a good weekend ahead of you. Uh, we'll see you again. We'll see you again, hopefully, by Monday. Okay? Bye-bye, everybody. Bye, Eva. <laughs> okay, bye-bye.